All right, so our goal here today is to draw the basketball game for the seventh grade manufacturing in Tinkercad. A uh, good place to start is I opened up Tinkercad.com, and um, I wanted to start here because I want to remind you we do not need to sign up. We need to sign in, go to more providers. And sign in with Google. Um, you can tell it. You might as well tell it to remember you, because um, you'd be the only one logging in under your account name on your computer. Uh, while this is opening up, uh, we will also need the ABMS Tech Ed website. Uh, you can find this through Classroom or just search for ABMS Tech Ed on Google, and it will pop right up for you. Um, in here, you need to go to Projects. I want the basketball game, and what I'm looking for here is the technical drawing, uh, both of these pages. I like to open this in a separate pop-up, it's a little easier to manage and see. Uh, I can zoom in and zoom out and everything else here, so get the width, that works. Much, much easier to see here. Alright, let's go back to Tinkercad. Uh, since you'll be just starting this, most likely, I'm going to create a new design. If you're not already on the page I was just at, just click the Tinkercad logo and it'll take you to that. That's called the dashboard. Uh, when you come in, it gives you some crazy name. Let's start here. Um, I'm going to take this and change it to basketball game. And just click out in No Man's Land. <clears throat> also, Lower right hand corner, snap grid, set to one millimeter. I want this in inches. We made the basketball game in inches. We want this set to inches. Go to edit grid. Change units to inches. And um, since the base of this thing is 10 inches long, this isn't even big enough to make the project. So um, I don't know. Let's say 15 by 15. Why not? Actually, the width, the thing's only 4 inches wide. Um, we'll do 10 by 15. It really doesn't matter. As long as it's more than 10 inches, it should be just fine. And here we go. Alright, so now we're here on the page. A um, couple, one other setting, I guess, we need to change. Um, over on the left hand side, we have our uh, different parts of the size of the object, um, our home button, some zoom settings, and then we can toggle between orthographic and perspective um, views. We want to change this to orthographic. And really, um, it's not that big a deal on why it's not worth getting into, but just please change it to orthographic. Snap grid, I'm going to go with a sixteenth of an inch for now. Okay, um, we're going to build this just like we were actually building the project. I'm going to start with the base and then work up from there. Uh, of course, there'll be some different things because this is just a 3D model, but um, with a race. So, overall dimensions that I need to know, 3 quarters of an inch thick, 4 inches wide, 10 inches long. So, bring the box. Um, Want to click on one of the outside white corners here, and we'll change this to inches long. And just drag it over, get that corner again, four inches wide. And here, the cone, the black cone, is going to lift this away from the bottom of the uh, basically from the bottom of our work plane. I don't want to do that, I just want to change the thickness. So, you need the white box here. and Three quarters or 0.75. There. Now this will show dimensions in fraction form, but um, it won't accept numbers in fraction form, so you may need a calculator to define some of these. But uh, there's our base. Um, I just my own personal way to do this. I like to change the color so it's a little easier, and I get contrast between this and the next part. Um, so we have the base. 
<clears throat> Next, let's go ahead and put in the spoon block. And I'm going to come back to the slot later. Let's just get the spoon block on here. Um, remember, it's cube one and a half by one and a half by one and a half. So if I bring out a box and just drop it here, it's going to start from the bottom of this work plane and it'll be sitting inside of our base. I don't want that. I could use the cone to move it up, but um, to make life easier, take a work plane, drop it on top of the base. Now I'll bring out my box. This makes life a little easier. And let's set it to one and a half by one and a half by one and a half. Five. Five. And I have a couple. This is not the right one. There's the right one. 1.5. Okay. <clears throat> the reason I set this to orthographic, I'm going to go to my top view. Um, there we go. Oops. The home view is not what I wanted there. Not what I meant to hit. Top view. Um, let's see. There we go. I can hold down the mouse wheel if you have a mouse and drag this up so I can see this a little better. Um, let's set this so it's flush with the edge and roughly centered for now. We'll make sure it's dead center in a second. Okay. Um, how I like to do that, I'm going to bring out another box. I'm going to change color to something completely different. And let's see how far from the edges we need to be. I need to go to the assembly drawing. Right here, one and one fourth from either edge of the base. So all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to set this dimension to one and one fourth or 1.25. There we go. That dimension doesn't matter. I just want to make sure I'm where I want to be off the edge here. Now, if I use my left and right arrow keys, it's not going to put me right on that edge. Um, my snap grid is too large. I can change it either to something really small or off, which moves in super fine movements here. But let's see what 164th will do for me. It's still not quite on. That wouldn't be that bad, but it's, uh, it would drive me crazy. Let's see. That looks much better. That box that pops up, um, if you just slide everything to the left a little bit, that should take care of that problem for you. And here we go. So, all I need to do with this, I get my snap grid set to off, so it's super fine movements here. You could bump it up a little bit. I'm just using the left and right arrow keys. I'm just going to set my box so it's touching blue shape. That'll put me right where I want to be. Up here again, it's not a huge deal, but technically, we want it just how it is in the drawing. Which would mean I'd want to adjust this so it fits just right. Looks pretty good. Um, let me go ahead back to uh, I'm going to use the bottom left hand corner of the cube here. This is what we would call an isometric view. We can see it looks pretty good now. This we'll use later. I'm just going to drag it off. Um, now that I have this, I'm going to turn it brown as well. And I will hold down the shift key and click on the base. And above the shapes box here, I can group. So now instead of being two separate parts sitting on top, one on top of the other, it's now one solid part. Okay. <clears throat> next thing I want to do, I'd like to put in the pole next because it starts from the same plane here. We we'll just work up. We're not going to deal with the basketball unless you really want to, and I'm not going to deal with a spoon on here. Um, I just want this right here. Okay. The pole is 11 inches tall, and it's a diameter of 3 eighths of an inch. Um, I really need to change my drawing. In class, we've been setting our depth for the pole. The, um, instead of 3 eighths, we've been using a half an inch. Same thing down here, we've been using a half an inch. Um, I think I actually redrew this and just haven't posted it on the website yet. 
use a half an inch. I'll fix this drawing. If you're looking at this and still see three eighths, I'll fix that. If you look at it and see half inch on there, great. But uh, let's use a half inch. The one reason makes it more stable when we actually make this. The second reason, um, here with the 11 inches, I don't need to cut a hole in the base and in the backboard and then insert the um, pole into it on what we're doing. Um, when I made this drawing, I did have to do that. For what we're doing, we do not. So half inch plus half inch, of course, is an inch. We'll just make this 10 inches long instead of 11 because a half inch is into the base and another half inch is up into the backboard, leaving us one inch less. So <clears throat> I'm going to bring over a cylinder, drop it back here. To get diameter, all I have to do is make the length and with the same number. 3 eighths, again if you need a calculator, but it's 0.375. Help if I type the right numbers. Same thing this way, point I'm on my angle. Oh, what's that? 0.375. Enter. There we go. Now I have a 3 eighths diameter. Um, my height said it was going to be 10. And here we go. There's my pole. And now we just have to set it in place. Um, I'm just going to reuse this shape. Let me set my snap grid to a 64th for now and make it a little quicker. Top view, so I can look straight down on it. Um, so you know why I put this on orthographic. If I go to perspective view, it doesn't quite show things the same. Like here, I don't just see the top of the spoon block. I see the top and what would be considered the back end of it. Um, if I switch back to orthographic, I only see the top view. It's just a little more beneficial for what we're trying to do. Okay, placement for the pole. It's two inches from an edge, three quarters from the end. So watch those arrows from here to the center point. It's two inches from the end into this center point is three fourths. So let's set those numbers here. Three fourths would be 0.75, and of course, two inches is two inches. And we'll place this right down on that corner. Like before, I really want that to be right, right on point. Um, probably I can try without that off. This way it looks right in line. Over here, not so much, so I'll turn my snap grid off and just tweak it a little bit. Um, anytime we're dealing with a CAD drawing, this is a CAD drawing, computer-aided drafting. Precision and accuracy are key. Uh, so, you know, that's why I want to make sure that it is precisely on that edge and not just about on that edge. If any of you choose to take uh, any of the CAD courses in high school, you'll definitely find out exactly what I'm talking about here. But um, Precision is key. Right now, my snap grid's off, and I'm just trying to what I'm going off of right now, center up on here, I am going off the center of these black boxes to go with the center lines here. Um, that will give me close enough approximation, It'll be very, very close if I'm right on the center to get where I need to be. <clears throat> uh, just to show you, if I make this a hole, we're right in the center of our part here. Go back to solid. And let's go back to isometric for that corner box here. All right. The blue box, for now, I'm done with it. Let's get rid of it. So now I have my base, my spoon block, and my pole all placed where I want them. Like before, change this to the brown color. Hold down Shift key and click on the rest of the assembly and I will group this as well. 
If at any point you accidentally mess something up, all you got to do is uh, you can ungroup parts, rearrange them, and regroup them again. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now let's jump up to the hoop and backboard. Um, let's go with the backboard first and place the hoop off of it. For my dimensions, we have 5 and 3 fourths in length, 4 inches wide, and 3 fourths of an inch thick. Again, watch those arrows. 3 eighths is just showing me the center point here. Um, I want 3 fourths thick. Again, um, so I don't have to move stuff all over the place to make sure I have it exactly where I want it. I'm going to get a work plane and drop it right on top of my pole. That'll make this much, much easier. Um, go to the top view again. And I'm going to create the dimensions on my part outside here, and then I'll bring it down and center it up and place it right on top of the pole. I think it's a little bit easier that way. So now we got to consider here is we're looking at this a different way. We're looking down on it. Um, Looking down on it, I'm going to see length, and I'm going to see thickness, not width. So, length, 5 and 3 fourths, 5.75. Thickness, 0.75. And then, um, for my height, I need that white box right there not one inch it is four inches there we go all right so now this is set um, we just got to center it over top of the pole here I could do a few things I could look from the underside of it which actually might be the easiest way to do this um, and center it up there I could um, look from the top and change this to a hole actually if I flip that to the underside it might be difficult to get uh, this space is going to be blocking what I need to see. So let's go ahead and try making a hole. And I can use this for a quick approximation where I need to be. Um, turn my snap grid on. I'll go with the 16th. That'll move pretty quickly. And let's center this thing up. Now, one thing that might actually work out in our favor. The center point here. Um, I can probably just lower my snap grid, move this till it looks like it is centered here. Um, if you look at the two lines, darker lines intersecting the pole there, they're not quite on center. You can visibly see they're not quite on center. So that isn't going to be exactly where I want it. But um, yeah, it's always different things here I think what might be easiest here and I haven't quite done it this way but I think it'll work I'm gonna use this um, I'm gonna go from the outside edge to the center here and um, maybe from here over that would give me these two dimensions two and seven eighths over from the outside edge to the center, three eighths from here in. Um, if I line it up with this and line it up with the pole, we should be all right. Uh, I could select the pole. Actually, again, that selects the whole thing. If I ungroup and select that pole, let's see what I can do here. Move this a minute. Probably square this up. There we go. Um, pretty well centered here. I think I can just use that as my center. And while we want it precise, it is just a model. It's not going to be anything but a model. Um, it looks like my corner is right on the center here. So honestly, I'm just going to go with that. Um, if you wanted, you could set it from the outside corner here and make sure it's you know, right on point. But um, 
if you follow what I'm doing here, I think this will work just fine. What I was doing is just using that as my center point. Zoom in a little more and see if I'm right where I want to be. Looks pretty well centered up. That should be just fine. Let's get rid of, well, let's keep this box. This box can turn into my hoop. Um, this was a hole. I don't want it to be a hole. I want to make it into the backboard. Let's take that, hold down shift, select the pole and the base, and group everything into one solid piece. So right now, here we go. We have everything but the hoop at the moment and the slot in the spoon block. <clears throat> hoop. Let's go to the drawing. We have a two and a half inch square with the hoop. That is a half of an inch thick. So two and a half by two and a half by half inch. Um, we do have the rounded corners. Uh, there's a couple different ways we can do this. Um, it can be a little bit trickier here. So let's go ahead back to this. Um, all right. So we can make this into our hoop. Okay, so um, we're going to do this a little different. Since in Tinkercad, we don't have the ability to put a um, fillet or chamfer or anything onto a part. Um, sometimes you got to get a little more creative. Um, so let me jump back and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I can't just make a box and then use a tool that will round these corners over like I would in other CAD programs. Um, so what we're going to have to do is use circles to get these and then build in the rest with rectangles so um, let me start just set this to half an inch I definitely want this to be um, two and a half inches wide it's just the uh, length of it or the way we're looking at it now kind of somewhat the depth of it is what we'll want to um, play around with here. So let's go to a top view. Let me just set this over here because it's easy. Let's bring in two circles. All right, now these are already at one inch diameter, but we need a radius of one inch. So Recall radius is half of diameter, so we need to change each of these to 2 inches by 2 inches. 1. This one, same thing. 2 by 2. Here we go. Now... To get out to that point. Um, I think I might just go ahead and set this to two and a half inches as well. So now this is the shape it should actually be other than around the corners. Um, what I can do here is use this and um, what I'm doing here I'm gonna set this so it's just touching that outside edge. Which it is here. Actually, it is there. Same thing with this one. And again, the reason we made it two by two, just a reminder, is because we want the radius to be one inch. So it might look funny now, <clears throat> but this is going to give us a one inch radius. Um, what I need to do is drop the rectangle back to the center point on these. I can just grab here and drag back. Looks about right. Let's see. Maybe just a hair farther here. There we go. One and a half inches should be right where we want to be. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and select all three of these and group them. Right now, the only other thing I need to do... <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hopefully, maybe some of you caught what I just did wrong there. Here's what I did wrong. I did not set the height of these. Five. 
0.5. There we go. Oops. Now let's group all of those together. I'm just clicking and dragging out a box with the arrow tool. I don't want those. I don't want the whole thing. I just want my hoop assembly so far. Now let's group it. There we go. Uh, we have this funny little section here. All I got to do is fill that in with a different rectangle, and we'll be fine. Um, change color so it's easier to see here. Set that up. Um, let's make this look as good as possible. Set it to my higher points board here. And just reinstall it. Looks pretty equal both sides here. Again, my height is different. Changes to 0.5, half an inch. So in Tinkercad, that's something a little different. You always got to kind of think about, you know, what you can do to make a shape look the way you want it. Um, using just, these are called primitives, um, just the basic shapes. Now we can put in our whole cylinder. There we go. I'll double back. This is a one and one half inch through hole. So set these to one and one half. I actually don't do it. I just did. I'm getting the angle here. I don't want the angle. Let's go to the top view so that doesn't happen. One five, one and a half inch triple. And <clears throat> quite honestly, um, things two and a half inches. The hole's one and a half. I'm just gonna make a um, half inch shape to set that where I want it. Bring in a box, change the color to something totally different. Let's just set this to 0.5 by 0.5. There we go. From the back forward, I'll set it to half of an inch. Roughly, that's fine. Again, while precision usually is the key here, um, for our sake, this will do just fine. Right on there, let's check from this side, we should be, yeah, so that'll work just fine. Um, this can go. Now, to make sure, absolutely sure, that I get that hole cut the whole way through, um, I can see it here. I like to take this and use the cone and just drop it a little through that floor. Now, it's guaranteed I'm going to get that cut the whole way through. Um, all we have to do is group these two parts. So hold down Shift and Group. There is our hoop exactly how we want it. Now, I know that was a little bit messy, and you know, I'm kind of figuring out exactly how I wanted to do it as we work on this, but um, that's something that's just something you're going to run into with this program. It's good for you to see that. Um, Again, like I said, you'll have to really kind of use your creativity sometimes to figure out how can I make something look how I want it. Now, again, we're just making the model here for our sake. Uh, I could either eye this up with the center of the pole here. Um, you can see from the gradient shades these like little straight lines here um, about where my center is. Or... I can set it off of an outside edge. Let's go ahead and be precise and set it off of an outside edge. Bring in a box, change my color, and if I go down to the assembly drawing, one and five eighths from the outside edge. Okay, one and five eighths. This number doesn't matter because we're just looking for distance from here to here. Um, one, oops, one point six two five is five eighths. Enter. Um, we'll set this down here on the outside corner, and just using my arrow keys, I'm gonna get it to the top view, and I'll set that back against here so I can make sure I'm where I want to be. 
lines up well. And you can see I did a pretty good job of getting this exactly where I wanted it here. Um, we're right on point. If not, just tweak it as needed. I'm just the tiniest, tiniest bit, a fraction of a fraction of an inch. I'm going to leave it be. I just need to make sure that I'm actually touching the backboard. Blue block can go. Select it, hit the delete key or um, backspace on a Chromebook works just fine. Select my two parts, group them, and you notice it turned everything red. I just go back and change it to brown. And here we go so far. So that's looking good. Um, last thing, our slot. This can be a fun one. <clears throat> Uh, for that, I'm going to take work plane and just drop it out in no man's land and it puts it back under the project. Um, let's go ahead to a better view of this. Uh, initially, let me just hit the home button and then change the view a little bit here. And it looks really good so far. Uh, I could bring out a work plane and put it here on the edge and set it up that way um, I think I will I will go ahead and do that uh, slightly different from what you may be thinking though. I'm gonna put work plane on one inch I'm gonna go around to the opposite end of the part so this is on the back side of what I'm looking at I'll bring out a box and that's on the wrong side of what I'm looking at too um, simple fix. We can just drag this. Later on, we're going to make sure this goes the whole way through the part. So really, at the moment, it doesn't matter where it is. Um, we'll take care of that in a minute. I'll just leave a little on the other side of the plane. Let's set up our size. Our slot. I didn't actually put the dimensions for the slot in here because I cut it in glass. But um, it is something you really should know. Uh, let's go with... And I'll show you why. Here's what we'll set it up to. Let's set it to an inch is fine here. Let's do an eighth of an inch here. 0. 0.125. Enter. That should work just fine for our slot. That's about what I cut it to. Um, here it says 7 eighths in, but because it's at an angle, um, that wouldn't actually be a true 7 eighths. The, from here to here wouldn't be a true 7 eighths. Just what you need to lay out as a true 7 eighths. I can take the white box here and just drag it. It needs to be longer than the part. And that's really all that matters right now. Um, turn it into a hole. And I'm not going to worry about an exact angle here. We're just going to make it look pretty similar to what we did in class. Uh, let's try 67.5 degrees. We'll set it back in here and see if that looks pretty accurate. Looks like it might be a little too much of an angle. This one we're not going to set the specific. Um, I'm not going to come down a quarter of an inch or anything. We'll just make it look, you know, about like what you see here, and it'll be just fine. Um, let's go a little farther with the angle here. Now, if you see what's happening now, it's jumping uh, from 0 to 22.5 and in increments like that, 45. Go out farther, and I have a finer control over my angle here. Um, and again, because I was set at one angle, now it's going to... You know, if I started out and went straight to 7 degrees, it's going to look differently than what you see here. Um, something about like this looks good. Let's move it up higher. Maybe in a little deeper. About like that will be just fine. Again, make sure it's extending out both edges. Make sure that it's extending out of the front of the project. And then all we have to do is group the two parts together. And 
There we go. Um, zoom out and see what we have here. Looks good. Work plane, drag it and drop it. And there you go. <clears throat> There's your basketball game. Uh, at this point, you have it named, you have it made, it's to scale. Um, that's roughly what we want here. Um, I'm going to have you go to share, invite people, and it will create a link. Generate new link, copy this, add this onto Classroom for me. And it does give you, a, you know, there is a time where this link will expire. So um, if you're getting this in late, please let me make sure that I know that you're putting it in. If you're getting it in really early, same thing. Make sure that I know that it's there so I can get that link. Uh, if it, something happens, you can always come generate a new link and send it to me. But um, that'll give me access to your drawing just so uh, this will be a formative grade. I can come in, I can check your sizes, and make sure everything is as it should be. Um, there you go. If uh, you need to go back and change anything, again, you can ungroup parts. You might need to ungroup a bunch depending on it goes one step at a time. But uh, you can go back and adjust anything that needs adjusted. But you would want to have that single part isolated to do so. And um, if your part looks like this, like I said, go ahead and share the link with me. And um, you're all done.